hello, hello, my special um, Love and Healing Ministries tribe. Well, um, this is another Sunday, right? Sunday, the 13th of February, 2022. And um, I'm blessed to minister to you. And um, I'm starting, um, standing up when I minister. You know, we grow, we learn, and, and we, we do things better, right? And uh, by grace, I'm going to eventually maybe have some more light and stuff like that. But what's most important for me is what I say. And so if people can hear what I say, it doesn't matter what they see. It doesn't, I mean, seriously, the testimony is what people hear. And, well, of course, what they see eventually by your actions, your life, and everything like that. So this morning, I want to um, do the last part of this series on the Samaritan woman as plays on my heart. And before that, I'm going to say a word of prayer, right? Uh, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, I want to thank you for today. I want to thank you for a new day. I want to thank you for our lives. I want to thank you for my kids, my home, my friends, my families. I want to thank you for everybody who would listen to me or who listens to me. I want to thank you for those who have given their lives to Jesus. I want to thank you for those who are still seeking. I want to thank you for those who are serving, right? Um, I just want to give you all the glory and I want to beg you today, Papa, that you help us all your children to not be ashamed of saying that we believe in you, we have faith in you, to not be ashamed of sharing our testimonies and to not be ashamed of completely abandoning our past at the cross. I'm going to tell it in the city, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So, um, the last two episodes, the first one I saw, I, I, I talked about was, uh, are you ashamed to have an encounter with Jesus? Right? The Samaritan woman, um, she was first reluctant at the beginning, right? She was like, how come a Jew? What are you doing with me, a Samaritan woman? Why are you even passing through this village? What do you want from me? I have asked God several times. I've asked my mother, woman, what do you want from me? I was like, God, now just leave me alone. I'm already doing enough like this. What is it? What do you want from me? But um, Jesus wasn't rude. Jesus wasn't um, arrogant. Jesus wasn't dismissive. Jesus did not just show her past and her face like that and make a mockery of her and just judge her and all of those things. No. So uh, we learned about that. And um, that made this woman to, to be comfortable, to trust Jesus, <clears throat> to have this engagement with him. Because it's not just like she went there and he said, give me water. And she just drew the water and gave him. No, she ended up, did not even, she, she did not even draw the water in the end. She actually asked him questions and he clarified and he spoke and spoke and stuff like that. So that's why the last time I was looking at this engagement. So don't just go to meet Jesus and sit there and don't talk. And just say, no, you have to have this engagement, this conversation, this communion. And yes, I'm going to church today. This is the first Sunday I'm going back. That's why you see me looking so excited and all dressed up. And I'm really going to have this engagement with Jesus. And if I have this opportunity, I'm going to share my testimony, right? But So this is what I want to talk about today. Go to Jesus, be healed. And go tell it in the city. We see this woman, right, from verse 27 to 30, how it ends up. And how she goes, tell it in the city. Oh, she said, please, you people should come and see. Come and see. Come and see what the Lord has done. Come and see what the Lord has done. So when they had finished their conversation, you see how intentional, wonderful it is like, when they finish, that is when the disciples come back. Just then, verse 27, uh, his disciples came back. They marveled. That's John 4, right? John chapter 4, verse 27. Just then, his disciples came back. They marveled that he was talking with a woman. But no one said, what do you seek? How dare they? <laughs> or why are you talking with her? Who are they? After all, the disciples are supposed to be learning. So he's teaching them a lesson. You don't 
start judging people. Eh, that man is a prostitute, that's a strip woman, that is an adulterer, that's a this, that's a that. You know the way sometimes you walk into a church or you are passing near a man of God or all of those things and you feel it or even on social media, you see how people judge people. You know, stuff that and sometimes you'll be like, are they Christians? Papa God, I beg you. So, so the woman left her water jar. This is this one caught. It just caught my attention. It just blew me up. It's like she left the thing. She abandoned it. She was like, ah. After this encounter, this engagement, I'm not carrying me no water anymore. What? He will give me water, living water. What am I doing with this local jar? But then the jar didn't mean nothing to her anymore. And went away into town and said to the people, hey, come see this woman who was ashamed. Who will not even want to interact with people at the well? Who will be living when everybody has already fetched and gone home? Who was probably living alone in a small corner there uh, with that man who was not even her husband? You know how probably in those days and even today, when you are living with a man who is not your husband, who has not married you, who has not gotten married to you, who cares about you? Like, ah, that one can't we stay until we see a ring? <laughs> so you cannot even go to somewhere and you, you, you are. You are Making like that, like other people who are kind of married, you know, and stuff like that. The respect is different. The consideration is different. But no, because this woman has had this encounter and engagement with Jesus Christ himself. Who can say what to this woman anymore? She's the one telling people things now in the city. So she said, come see a man who told me all that I ever did. Ha! Can this be the Christ? Because they too, they were waiting. In spite of this division between Jews and Samaritan, ah, I mean, I even read today how Peter went to Cornelius. I was teaching Cornelius was a devout Gentile. He was not a Jew. Peter, Peter, who did not even want to think that Gentiles could have anything to do with what? He is the one. He got this revelation. The same time Cornelius said, oh, somebody is coming. You are going to somebody. Oh, my goodness. Could this be the Christ? Uh, if it is you, will you stay? No. They went out of the town and were coming to him. Amen. Of course, all of them. And you know how those people used to whoop like that. I want to see with my eyes. Oh, my eyes have seen, my ears have heard, my mouth will talk about the goodness of God. My eyes have seen, my ears have heard. My mouth will talk about the goodness of God. So, please, people are, are, are well, we are walking in pistols, and we conquer the world more and more by the blood of the Lamb and the power of our testimonies. Don't be ashamed to share your testimony. Oh my goodness! I put some verses there, right? I mean, sing, ha. Ah. I will sing unto the Lord a joyful song. I will praise his name for the Lord is good. I don't have me no qualms singing, shouting, blogging, posting, all of that. Because I know where my faith, my hope, my grace, my strength, my everything comes from. So no, I am not. If you don't want to see, don't see. You don't want to read, don't read. You don't want to listen, don't listen. But you cannot tell me to stop. Nobody, and I mean no human being can tell me to stop. Whether they think I'm qualified or not, or whether they think I know, whether they think I'm standing or sitting, I don't even pay attention to all of those things. You see, anything that I'm doing, the conviction comes from within and from the word. Because I have such faith in that. And I've had so much so much signs and wonders in my life and he's shown me so much and he keeps showing me so much for me to even doubt for once you know so go tell it on the mountain over the hills and everywhere you never know who will listen and be like hey if that mark if it can happen to mark if man can do this ah me too you know it's not like i'll say the bible says repent the kingdom of god is at hand no that's not my ministry and i thank god for that and I wanted to say that, you know, we who have decided, you know, to follow Jesus, we are the light of the world. We are the sun. Nobody lights a lamp to put it under the table. What was the point in lighting that lamp? So why would I keep my lamp under the table? No, my light. It has to shine. If you don't want to see it, you are still in the darkness. You are still whatever. Okay, good for you, but I will keep shining. So this is my word today to encourage you. 
Don't be ashamed. Whatever that past is, you can abandon it there. See, she forgot that jar. It wasn't important anymore. My past. I've written books. Everything is there. I've abandoned it. Me, I'm a new creature. You know, whether anybody says that word to... Uh, and every day, I seek to renew my mind by the word. Because as I renew it, my life keeps being transformed. So let it be, let it be, let it go. Open up, you know, come to him. Come to him. That's 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 the best of my ministry. Come to me, all oh, you who are weary and labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And don't, don't seek not do not lean on your own understanding. That that's my own, right? So I'm just so grateful for this opportunity, and I just want to thank you, Daddy. I want to thank you, Jesus. I want to thank you, Holy Spirit. For the grace to minister this morning as I prepare to go to church. And may it be a wonderful experience for me and for my kids. And um, bless everybody in all their endeavors today. Especially if it's all for your glory, sharing their testimonies. So that so many more can believe and come to you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Happy Sunday world and on Wednesday, right? God bless us all.